All right, Mano Amigos, we've got quite the show for you today. I'm not sure if you can guess who is on the program. That's right, you guessed it. Mason Tickle and his band Head in a Box. As soon as he joins us, we're going to jump right in talking about his brand new project, Head in a Box. It's exciting stuff coming up right here on Mono A Mono. I don't think I'm going to be able to wear this when he joins. It's a little bit too stressful. I don't know if you could even hear me there either. I might have to pause it. <laughs> as soon as I said that, this pops up. Like I just missed him pop into the thing. Oh, well, I think I'm recording. Recording. Here we go. Mason. Hey, how's, how's it going? going? Right? Good. 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 Is that your like studio area there? Yeah. Yes, it is. I don't. I can't. Uh, let me see if I can see my. Oh. <laughs> nope. Hold on here. <laughs> <laughs> what just happened? Switch camera back to the camera, please. Guys, 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 come on, man. What's going on? Wait, I think here. Oh, no, now it's just nothing. <laughs> oh, you know what? It it keeps switching. OK. There's there's a thing, a problem. Let me where there's a setting somewhere. <laughs> there's a setting somewhere. OK, do you want to jump out and then jump back in? Yeah, let me do that real quick. I'll okay. do that. Now it's as if I'm going to get it like it's the first time. I'm not going to stop recording. I'm going to keep it going. Boom, boom. Like I'm a pro here. Like I know what I'm doing. Mono a mono. With Mason Tickle. Head in a box. Even if it doesn't happen, we've got the image now. We've got him there for the one second that he was there. We can take that. I'm sure I was in it. We'll put it together, even if that ends up being the entire interview. Here it is. Look at that on the recording. There we go. OK, don't welcome. Back. I'm not going to touch any of the settings this like when we're in this conversation, because that that was a nightmare. <laughs> I mean, that All right. Was... Oh, man. Do you do a lot of these type of like chat things for work or anything? Not. Um, no, I, I, I've done it with like only for for friends or for catching up with friends and stuff. So I uh, it's it's I, I for this, I actually set up because I had to use my to use my audio interface. I had to like to like set up some new like metering programs and like a virtual a virtual loopback sort of system so that I could actually use my interface and like a, a proper studio microphone here and everything and oh so this is it, I, this is all the first time I've set it up for for this but uh we'll cool. uh yeah but yes this is the the studio the uh the room which I the layer where you do you record in there? Yeah. Nice. Well, maybe I'll jump right into a question related to the layer here. Sure. What got you into all this recording? Kind of like, because you've set it up where you're doing a lot of this recording and everything on your own. How did yeah. you get into all that? <laughs> it's kind of, it's kind of like. I was going to say like everything else, but I, you wouldn't know that. So it's, it's if we, I tend to like, if I want to do something, I'll just do it myself, like, or try to learn how to do it myself. So I don't have to involve other people or like, I, I don't have to wait on others or, or like, you know, schedule myself around others. So 
even though it's way more work to learn everything myself, it just it feels productive. It still feels productive when you're when you're sort of doing that. So it's I, I guess I just sort of sort of jumping into it out of just uh, like out of hobby or out of uh, a, a desire to further my hobby, but also like um, in, a, in a sense out of necessity, I suppose. Nice. But, yeah. I, you did something similar, like you recorded your own project for Stree Adam too. Yeah. Yeah. How, so with your new project here is Head in a Box. Actually, the first time I heard the name, I was thinking, whoa, this is getting like pretty dark. <laughs> Maybe because I was watching uh, like crime TV and stuff like that. I'm thinking like, uh, what is it? Seven, where the the ending is the head in the box, actually. I think yeah. it's seven. Um, so I was thinking dark like that. But then when I saw the imaging, yeah, it's actually a person with their head in a box. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It, it, that was so I was just going to say, like, that was when I made the name, uh, I was a little bit. I did think about the other side of it and it being like gory. And I'm like, I like my, my anxiety always goes to the extreme. I'm like, what if one day somebody really hates my music and then like wants to just chop off my head and put it in a box. And like, I'm like, Oh God, <laughs> don't go that way. <laughs> so where, where did the idea of the name come from? Uh, it was, uh, I, I, I had been writing a few of the songs already. Um, and I didn't really know, I didn't know really what I wanted to, really what I was doing. Like, it, it was kind of like, I'm starting to write and just seeing what comes up or seeing what, what comes out of the writing process. And at, when I realized that I was sort of, when I was writing, like, each song is an individual um, story about a fictional character but that this character is like a perspective of of a character um that is based off of somebody in my life either like either it was like extremely fictionalized or like there were like little things drawn from uh somebody i was talking to or 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 whatever else but it it the idea with head the head in a box was like it's kind of it's it, it's 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 there there are many i well, i got so excited about it because i was i was running my mouth to uh to tom who did the logo uh about it when i was when i first thought of it and it was there was it's kind of i i envisioned a a, a person you know just just everyone's anyone at all like per, maybe myself just walking around doing normal things in normal life but we always like or at least in my experience I, there's always some sort of like disconnect from even if i'm talking to somebody i'm sure this is this is like a very common thing it might be some sort of social anxiety or something but if i'm talking to somebody there's still like there's still this box this dividing sort of thing where i'm living in my world and this world is like it, it, it's within this box that's on my head. Nobody else can see the box, but I and I can see out. Um, but it's just sort of like a there. There's ways to see it. Like a it's a it's a perspective thing. It's like a, I'm living in my world, which is in this little box, or it could be seen as a um, an ignorance thing, uh, like a, an ignorance or loneliness or whatever else. Like there's so many different so many different um ways that i was interpreting it and i actually i thought about that just before doing this interview there was another reason and i was like right i haven't thought about that reason since since i actually made the name and now it's gone now i forget what it was but it's yeah it's mainly a perspective thing like it's it's a I it, it, there's always some sort of, of disconnect and like between people and we all live in our own little worlds um and I sort of see it as like a the more you you learn about others and empathize with others the more sort of transparent 
the box really becomes like to to like seeing the actual world around you um and others um but it, unless you unless you learn more about others unless you actually like empathize with others you're just you're literally like just playing this this vr game in in that that your mind is making up as you go along like you're living in your own fantasy essentially unless you incorporate nice. others <laughs> yeah so it's yeah. it's very like a uh, yeah, it's complex. I do a terrible job explaining it, but uh, no, no, no. I, I, <laughs> I fully got it as you yeah. were going through it. And what it made me think of actually is sometimes the worst interviews I have, like for a job or things like that, or when I'm sitting across from someone, and then all of a sudden I start thinking about what I'm thinking about, like, oh, have I answered this question enough? And, and it's almost like I'm <laughs> in my own head. Yeah, talking to myself and thinking, well, now I'm talking to myself. I should be more engaged in this, like yeah. with with the, what's going on. And so, that idea, as well as I was picturing, like the 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 one video that you've got out there, yeah, um, for feel at home. Yeah, uh, is, is it? You mentioned Tom. Is he kind of one of the people who animated that, or Tom isn't Tom? Um... Tom was too busy. He he does a lot of animation. Like he he works and builds games and stuff. Um, um, like big massive online games and, and everything. But I, he was he's he was too busy to do the video. So I reached out to lyricvids.com and they actually did it. I I originally was thinking like a, a lyric video, but then I was like, no, let's let's do full animation. And so that's uh, yeah. Yeah, yes. I I thought it was an awesome video, and I feel like it even takes the head in a box idea like to a whole nother level with almost like with social media, where social media kind of pushes upon you almost the same views that you have, uh, more so so that you continue to interact with it, and it kind of keeps yeah. you in that same kind of box there. Um, yeah, just on and a whole nother level. Exactly, and it it also like it, it like it's n notoriously um, perpetuates and like spreads misinformation and and which which sort of like which makes the idea of like people living in a fantasy world like there there's people walking around right now thinking that like Hillary Clinton like literally drinks the blood of children <laughs> like 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 that is like that's not a world that exists. But in their head, it's it's exactly what they're seeing. It's legit. Like it's it's so it's yeah. Like it's it's yeah. <laughs> and is that is that kind of the idea behind that uh, release? That song was uh, is, is that what you were going for with when you were writing that one? So that one was um, that one in particular. That one wasn't wasn't very. Um, Q minded, I guess. <laughs> that one wasn't really angry at conspiracies in general. Um, that feel at home was more of like an anger, a frustration at. I have I had some I have some family members that that um, really really went down that that sort of that road way at the beginning of the pandemic. Just like they would go to go to when the mask thing was implemented and like you like have to wear a mask and go anywhere uh to go anywhere they they would one of them would like bring his kids to a to a store like a um like sale or something um and like they wouldn't wear masks they would go and he would get into an argue argument with the store people telling him that he can't be in here and his mask maskless kids would just like while his dad and, and the person was distracted, they would just go. They would just go and do this stuff in the store and shop and stuff. And it was just like that kind of stuff. I was just so frustrated. And I was like, it's so obvious to to me and to a lot of people, like, what we should be doing. But then there's people who are just living in a world that are that is, like, totally different to ours somehow. And that just sort of, it made me sort of, I wanted to empathize, but at the, at the same time, 
I want yeah, I want to sympathize, empathize, but at the same time, like sort of take little shots <laughs> in that song and, out of frustration. And that's sort of that's where it came out, or that's how it came cool. out. Yeah. You said you said too. Um, a lot of this uh, recording uh, for this uh, this release was uh, recorded during the pandemic, or yeah. I guess in the past year and a bit or so. Yeah. Um, it, are all the themes kind of dealing with pandemic stuff, or is it more than just that uh, going on? Yeah. So it, it's honestly like it was. It's just the one song that's. Um, pandemic related like like totally they all sort of because i was writing in the pandemic i'm sure there's a lot of little inspirations um um here and there uh for example one conspiracy is sort of it's actually based off of the same person uh that feel at home was but it, it was like the guy who brought his kids to the store and everything and but it was it was it was made in a way that was like more general to conspiracy and it was it was cons- yeah general to conspiracy rather than rather than the pandemic um in its in itself but but yeah so there there's a lot of there's a lot of things that could be drawn from like little inspiration from the pandemic but feel at home is the only one that's about the pandemic okay yeah and- I feel like like in in a bunch of the interviews I've done as well, people say that recording during the pandemic was really good as a catharsis or mental health to to kind of put your emotions into music uh, yeah. for recording. But then they so they think recording during it is great, but releases are always weird. Or, well, or they're saying are weird, and some people are a little bit afraid to release during a pandemic some people want to release during a pandemic because it's a it's a milestone time this hasn't happened in a long time who knows if it if or when it'll happen again yeah and so what what are your thoughts with kind of the the idea of recording during it and releasing during it yeah so recording during it um I mean, it, it was it was it was great in a sense that like, especially for the first for the first while, um, the first many months of the pandemic, because I was still like everything was still new. And so I still had inspiration and or inspirational energy and, 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 and whatever else, despite not really having too many new scenarios happening uh, like. And it started to make me realize that, I guess recording is a little different, but for me is recording and writing is, I basically do it at the same time. Um, but what I was realizing is like, like now, for example, I I feel so drained of creative energy because there's been very, very few interactions with others. And so like, and I was realizing that really a lot of a lot of creative inspiration comes from just every day, a little like going to meet a, going to meet a friend at a bar and or like going out, going out to a restaurant, just exchange of information uh, with people. And that's sort of like just new ideas and everything just just subconsciously just happen and just new sparks keep the wheels keep turning that way. And when you're really when you're spending time, in isolation so much it's really like the only thing to thing to draw from is tv and and whatever whatever else like sure you can go for a walk and try to get things that way um but it's not quite the same so that it was great during the first few months and that's sort of the key that was the key sort of time for writing most of this stuff um but for recording and writing anyways it was it became less and less great i guess as as the pandemic went on now releasing that's a whole other complicated sort of thing i uh i i wanted i wanted to release mine during during a lockdown 
because of feel at home. Um, so I wanted it to be somewhat immediately relevant. Just if it, I needed it to be that way. So I sort of, and I had originally planned to release it later in the year, uh, later in the la- year, last year. Um, but because I was starting to really run thin with ideas and run thin with create, creative energy and because the I had so much time to work on stuff, I was like really starting to nitpick and drive myself crazy in the recordings. So it's like and my timelines kept shifting for like when I could possibly have it done to, to release. So now it ends up I, I basically when this new lockdown happened, this 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 third wave happened I, I told myself i was like i don't like it's it's getting released now like there's this is my deadline i'm not going to put it off anymore so i it gave me a deadline but if the pandemic kept going on longer and i was anticipating a fourth wave and a fourth lockdown and stuff i i don't know i i i could still be in the writing process right now <laughs> i could be releasing it later this year um so yeah so it, there's 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 pros and cons to both the re- releasing in the pandemic is sort of it, it it's there's there's less there's less pros of releasing in a pandemic because you can't there's no like release party or anything and you can't go out and play a show and, and or something like that so that's kind of like i i was feeling i've been feeling a void about that um but other than that i mean it's I think because the song was topical and because I wrote this in the pandemic, I was like, I I kind of have to release it during the pandemic. It it like made sense because it was all, it's my pandemic project of sorts. So in that way, it had to be released in the pandemic, but I wasn't happy about it. (laughs) I guess. Yeah. No, I always, I always find and that it's good to put limitations on things and kind of have a, a, an end date, to yeah. to finalize things because then sometimes I, I've known some musicians who have only ever put out one or two songs because the rest of the songs need to be perfect and they're not perfect yet and and so yeah. they never get around to finishing things so yeah. I think sometimes that's important just to get an end to it and to move on to something else exactly yeah so what would how would Head in a Box be different or a different project from Striatum? Like what would be, would you go into the writing differently or is it sonically different? What what makes it a, a different project? Yeah, so, so yeah, it's the writing process. The writing process is sort of the same. I, I sit in front of the computer and and start to write uh and a lot of the things like um well with 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 straight and with it it basically the a lot of the things that actually come out of like the finalized songs don't they aren't the original like the first or second run throughs or like the i when i was like just just working on ideas um like they'll be like I'll, I'll redo the guitar parts many many times um with with head in a box or and on the vocals and everything with, with head in a box i i wanted it to be sort of like rough around the edges like very very like there's there's so it, and like uh, kind of feeling like authentic and like kind of like it could have just been a sort of just thrown together because at the at the at the time like a lot of the tracks some of the guitar tracks are like they're 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 like the first or second or like i I recorded them before any of the other parts just as i was writing it and i just basically left them i maybe like quantized them a little bit but but um yeah i would so that's sort of with this, I, I wanted to sort of keep it as 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 rough as rough po- as possible. Now there's there's other there's some of the songs that I just <laughs> I drove myself to absolute madness trying to record 
the pro the the guitars specifically the guitar because head in a box it it is very sonically different than stratum in that in that head in a box has a coot is like a the acoustic the baritone acoustic the baritone eight um as like the only guitar there's one of them and i i keep it i keep it I keep pretty pretty strictly to one violin, one cello, uh, the baritone eight, um, uh, one synth, like just to fill out the sound a little bit, and then one, and then like electronic percussion. Um, whereas Stratum is like, it's, it's like sort of like Hans Zimmer writing metal music <laughs> to just like throw as much in there as possible and just fill it out. And it's, there's, there's very, no, there's, there's no acoustic guitars in, in the first or second that I'm working, that I'm soon to release album, um, first item. And so that's sort of, it's been a good like way to alternate, I guess, and like do new things and feel feel refreshed with a guitar, anyways. And that's so so that's sort of the difference. It's like one's rough around the edges and like raw and and more bare bones, where the other one is like super like experimental, massive production sort of thing. And that's really the the essence of it, I guess. Cool. Yeah, you mentioned too. I I almost forgot the. Uh... The baritone eight, the uh, guitar that you were saying, and yeah. I've played. I think is that um, a seven string guitar up on your wall there? The black yeah. one. Yeah. yeah. See, this... I tried to play a seven string guitar one time, and I had no idea what I was doing, and yeah. so I don't know understand what that seventh string does for me. And yeah. then you're playing in this in an eight string guitar. And yeah. so how do you know how to do these things? I I don't. And that that's kind of like that's that's kind of what makes it that I think that was that in itself like I I've played six string guitar for so long and I basically like it it, it sort of has been losing its excitement for me and and just going out and buying a seven string guitar really just actually because i bought a seven string guitar i like it sort of like led into stratum so it's like um yeah i don't think there's any six string with stratum uh, there, there's a there's a lap steel um or, or um yeah lap steel but there's no uh but there's no six string guitars and the the thing is like with the so this is this is actually this one is an eight eight string and this one's been a little bit of a challenge <laughs> so this one this oh, one is wow. like it's a eight string uh like there's li like literally eight strings yeah. there so is uh, i'm assuming and i'm sure i could you uh, uh google this but the the regular the first six strings are just like a regular six string guitar. What what is seven and eight for? Oh, just to get that low like like bowel rumbling sort of growl. <laughs> <laughs> just for rhythm ry mostly rhythmic, uh, but it's it's very much like a it's very much like there's other applications, but I imagine it's very much a, a gent. A gent instrument, like a, a gent metal, yeah. And um, uh, a lot of the time with a guitar like that, are you using, I guess on the, the six strings anyways, like an alternate tuning, like an open E or open C tuning so that almost like a, a power chord would be a one finger bar across? Yes, well, sometimes. I um, With the eight string, I've been realizing that the top, the top string you don't really incorporate you can uh, incorporate it into chords um but it's very much like a you kind of want to treat it like a like a rhythmic thing like a, like a bass guitar uh string in my experience anyways 
because it, it doesn't doesn't sound the nicest when you incorporate it into chords. Um, like I'm sure there are chords, and there's people who will dispute me on this and whatever else. But but for me playing it, it's it's like a, you would just sort of use it. This is not in 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 tune at all, but you would use it, in, it just sort of yeah rhythmically, and then you would jump up to do the chords and stuff. So it's 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 very novel, and unless you like have a have like an idea, like you know what you're going to use it for. Eight strings, a little overkill. Eight string, eight, eight string electric guitar. Anyways, um, but. The thing with the the baritone eight it's just like it's six strings. Well it's 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 eight strings, but it's like a six. So it's you're playing it like six, it's just oh, okay. These are coupled. Like like how twelve twelve string guitars have just each each string has two strings, essentially. Okay. So it's like they play octaves. So then, so there's four strings in the two, in the middle. Ah. Yeah. Is so that when of, you're just playing like a like a six string guitar, but it's got like the extra? Is it harmonies or is it just like an octave up? Yeah. So it, it's it's yeah exactly. Well, that's yeah exactly it. A harmony. There's an octave up. Um, so it's basically, it, it's, 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 I've heard that baritone guitars are very muddy sounding. And so adding that uh, octave up uh, harmony uh, just brightens it up. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Well, <laughs> you have it out. Can, yes. you, can you play a uh, uh, head in a box track for us here? I uh, I will certainly try. <laughs> I've been in, I've been in the pandemic. Well, we've all been in the pandemic, but um, for the entirety of this project's existence, so I haven't really performed. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stand a little bit, I think, because it'll be better for my vocals. All right. So this one is, uh, this one's called "Are You Happy," and it's the second track um, off the off the record that comes out at midnight. It's. Five hours away. <laughs> okay. Let me drink my adrenochrome, my blood. this 
what you wrote as you proceed to get old. Rest you'll never find. Become your parallel mind. But are you happy now? Great. That's uh oh man. <laughs> I was realizing when I was getting into that that I was not prepared for the the higher parts of the vocals, but I was like, I'm gonna do this anyways. All right, well, it sounded, sounded awesome. awesome. Yeah, so thank you. So you were saying right before that, um releases tonight. Yeah. Where can people go to find out more, to listen to it, to pick up this, to support you with this? Well, um, I mean, you can uh, stream it anywhere. It's it'll be any anywhere. So like anywhere, <laughs> Apple Apple Music, uh, Spotify, Deezer. I think Title. Um, there's like it's like a massive. There's there's like thirty different thirty plus different streaming sites that it'll be on. So. Really anywhere um, to to buy it. Um, <laughs> I haven't decided if I'm gonna do a band camp yet. Uh, if if so let's say no for now. Um, I, I I because I haven't decided. But if you if you're interested in buying it or or maybe reading the lyrics or whatever else, you can go to headinabox.ca uh, and at at midnight, I will be launching not the full website, but right now there's there's like uh, it's just a, an image and then a coming soon or whatever, and then the two videos. Um, so I'm gonna also in that section put a a little sampler media player, and you can actually buy it from there as well, and it'll come with um, come with a the notes like a, a liner notes and everything and and uh so that that i mean that's that way sort of like directly supports me and it's a you know, buying the album is sometimes nice but uh you can it's like streaming it is e equally nice really so it's if you wanted to stream it anywhere it open up youtube and it'll be there so it's whatever nice. whatever do. awesome now, I, so at headinabox.ca, people can check it out there. When when I go there, I don't know why I'm hung up on this. That image that's right there, is yeah. that Tom's image? <laughs> no. that Tom put together? <laughs> well, that one. one is, let me see here. Yeah. The one with kind of the tree growing into the person with the head in the box. Yeah, no, that one is is not that one so the tom's image is that white and black logo image where that has just the the business the guy in the business suit uh and with the head uh with the box on his head and that's gotcha. that's that one um the 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 one that you the one that's there is actually we did a photo shoot last fall uh, Justin Atkins is the photographer, and he also did the editing um, of that as well. Uh, local guy, um, 
really awesome to work with really great photographer and he he like he really thinks ironically uh, outside the <laughs> for, for i knew that was coming yeah nice <laughs> but, and that's actually to to go back to the the point earlier the with the head in the box thing um with striatum i basically will keep i basically try to it's like my outside the box thinking like me how to write it write musically and like how to formulate things and whatever else but head in a box i'm like keeping to it's like i'm keeping within a certain like boundaries so it's yeah. like music itself is within a box as well so that's kind of i think that was the point that i was remembering but i then i forgot and it's come full circle <laughs> or cube awesome awesome i love it when that happens yeah. Um, so wicked. So people can check out more uh, tonight. Definitely checking out headinabox.ca uh, yep. as well as streaming everywhere. And we're yep. going to have a whole bunch right here on the program. We're going to jump into a bunch of brand new Head in a Box right now, right Woo. here on CKMS Mono A Mono. Awesome. Well, thank you, Mason, for being here. That was awesome. Awesome hearing you play, too. I like these virtual concerts in lieu of uh, actually being out and uh, it's good to kind of see these and still promote arts kind of as best we can during this. Yeah, exactly. And it's a little bit, you get a little bit a window that's a little bit more intimate uh, into the, into these musicians who are already super intimate and like see music intimately. So it's like, it's, it's been an interesting experience for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Well, thanks, Rob. Well, really appreciate yeah. it. All yeah. right, I'll see you later. Take it easy, pal. All right, Mono Amigos. I'm getting a little bit uh, embarrassed now. I, I was thinking right at the end there, should I break out the, the box? Should I break it out for the end of the interview? End the interview with my head in a box? I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. We're jumping into some... Some of his tracks right here, some head in the box. Behind this whole interview, you were hearing some striatum. Maybe we'll get to some of that after we go into some more head in the box right here on Mono A Mono. <laughs> 